So I've been trying to think of different ways where I can share my experience and everything that I've learned in the past 10 years of being a bug bounty hunter or being on the offensive side of the security spectrum. And the more and more I think about it, it's just the easiest way to do this is just going out here making videos and talking about the things that click in my head as I think about content that I want to create. So I want to just start this intro to say this video isn't so much on the technical side of things. It's just mostly to talk about what you can do to become better at hacking, whether you're a bug bounty hunter, you want to get into hacking, you want to get your OSCP, you want to become a red team or whatever that reason it is. And I've been thinking about this a lot lately and I don't want to make the generic videos and talk about just things you should do and things you should learn but i think a lot of it is just a mentality and just a way of thinking that comes with becoming a top hacker or one of the best hackers out there whatever you want to do whatever your goal is so just thinking about this concept i pretty much put myself i sat down and thought about it that what did i do to take this hacking thing more serious what made things more interesting to me what made me want to do more and how did i get through it and I think I kind of have it down and I think this is a good place to talk about him and hopefully this video does the same for you. But before I do, do me a favor, drop me a comment, tell me what are some things you struggle with and hopefully I cover them in this. And if not, I can hear from you and cover them in the upcoming videos in the upcoming weeks. Okay, so the first thing that I really have been just thinking more and more about is, you know, what did I do to want to do more hacking? What did I do to go from unhappy not finding bugs and not being happy with the findings that I had as a bug bounty hunter to getting on the top of the leaderboard and doing way, way better and being happier about my outcome. I'm not claiming to be one of the best. I've just done a lot of good work and I think I've done enough years on the top of the leaderboard with bug crowd and hacker one that's worthy of listening to my advice. So hear me out. The one thing that I've noticed, regardless of what you do in life, regardless of who you are and what your work is that you do or what your expertise is outside of even hacking is that the people that are the most successful, they all have one single trait in common. And that is they're all super, super passionate about what they do. And that passion is exactly the thing that gets you out of those days where you don't want to work or you don't want to get out of bed or even the days that you're feeling burnt out and you just need a break. And that passion isn't something that you have right away. It's just whatever is pushing you to do this one thing at this point of time in your life. Going back to my personal experience, that passion and the reason that got me out of bed was I just didn't like where I was in life anymore. I was partying too much. And I was also in college getting a computer science degree where I knew I wasn't going to go far with it. I didn't want to become a developer. I didn't like writing code. And I always enjoyed hacking. So my passion and the reason that got me out of bed was I wanted to learn how to hack because at that point in time, I really needed something to get me out of college to push me to graduate, but I also needed something to put on my resume to get a job. So the goal wasn't to make money. And I'm not saying that was my goal at some point, but at that point in my life, 10 years ago when I was in college, the goal was what do I do to get out of this school and make sure I have a job with a decent company where I can make a decent salary and enjoy my life and not be upset at the outcome of going to school because I wasn't enjoying it. So that was a passion 10 years ago when I didn't know anything about web hacking and I was just learning. Later, that passion changed. I joined Hacker One. I wanted to become a top hacker. I wanted to do more. That was another one. It could purely be money, but honestly, with money, if you're not passionate and the only reason is you want to make money, and you're not enjoying this work, you're going to get burnt out and let it go. So the passion has to be something that you look inside and go, why is it that I want to do this? Is it worth the time and effort or is it just monetary? And if it is, can I make that monetary the reason why I wake up and sometimes don't find anything, don't find any volumes or don't make any progress and I keep going back to it. So keep that in mind. That is the quote unquote, the non-technical thing that comes with wanting to be successful and I think the most important thing is to have the passion to be able to get through the hard days. So next thing that I think is very important with especially hacking, and I also think this goes purely in life too, is the concept of being able to pivot. No matter what you do in life, you always need to have some sort of a plan B and hopefully you don't need to go to your plan B, but it's always good to have a plan B of you saying, hey, if this doesn't work out, this is what I'm going to do. Or it could be like having multiple streams of income, but with hacking, it's a little bit different. So I'll explain what pivoting means 
when it comes down to just hacking itself. So with pivoting, what I mean is it could be a number of different things. The first thing is just being able to learn different Vuln types and knowing how to do them all. And that's why I say, hey, learn one vulnerability type, XSS, move to SSRF, move to IDOR and so on and pivoting and getting good at all of them. But it could go beyond that. You have to be able to pivot and learn multiple skill sets that could help you, whether you're trying to just become a hacker, a bug bounty hunter, a red team or whatever it is. So it could be number one, the Vuln types that you learn, pivoting through the different ones, but also pivoting through the different stacks and technologies that you hack on. So you have to be good at being able to rip apart JavaScript apps versus ripping apart apps that are just written in Java and you know, they use JSP, or maybe even going on the ASP.NET and Windows machines and that sort of stuff. So you wanna be able to pivot between the three of these or the four of these or however many of them that you learn, because if one doesn't work, there's gonna be other companies that use different technology stacks. So you're not getting stuck and you can also be able to hack on these bug bounty programs or these companies or whatever it is to be able to stay relevant and included in the ecosystem of bug bounties. So pivoting is really, really important. You really have to be good at learning different things and being okay with learning on the fly. And honestly, with hacking, the best thing I can tell you is the learning process never stops. So you always have to learn and what better way to get good at this pivoting thing with your knowledge than learning new things and making the whole concept of Hacking is learning every day and just learning things as you hack more and more. So pivoting is really important, but there's also a third point that it's really, really uh, clever. I think that I you know just recently talking to Ryan Raider, he mentioned something about threat modeling and I'll let him explain threat modeling and I'll tell you what I think of it. Now, threat modeling is normally thought about from the blue team side, but it's actually just as relevant on the red team side. We need to understand that not every single uh, vulnerability, not every single CSERF has business impact in the application. So it's more worth our time to focus on things that are going to uh, be valued by the company or, or severely impact the, the application itself. Um, and this takes practice, uh, so definitely submit your reports uh, and try to validate your, your threat models before you know, diving deeper into uh, you know, committing to one program. I always send out a couple uh, you know, feeler reports to make sure that I've got the threat model right uh, before I spend a, an exorbitant amount of time on a specific app. Yeah, that was Justin. He is the co-host of the Critical Thinking Bug Bounty podcast. The other co is actually one of my favorite hackers, Joel, aka Techno Geek. I'll link to podcast down below. Go drop him a comment, tell him what's up and that I sent you. But on the topic of threat modeling, the threat model is to understand what is valuable and critical to a company. And it's not just vulnerability types. I think what Justin mentioned in his part is great, but it's also threat modeling what actually matters to this company. So if you threat model the vulnerability types that's important to them, you should also threat model for the web assets that's important to them. So from a bug bounty hunter's perspective, for me, for example, my threat model when I do a recon or when I go on these wide scope targets, the first thing I want to do is I want to identify all of these internal tools or internal core development, whatever you want to call them, whatever that could be meant to be internally used, I want to find that domain and go after them because a lot of times those are the things that host a lot of the critical or more sensitive data or sensitive tools. So for example, if I know that Uber uses uberinternal.com, I want to find those subdomains because within those subdomains, I can find their Jenkins instance, maybe they have JFrog or Artifactory and stuff like that, that could give me maximum impact of the vulnerabilities that I find. So when it comes down to hacking, there is a lot of secrets. It's just mostly knowing the, the hacker mentality that comes with it and the things that you need to be good at in order to become successful at hacking and bug bounty hunting. And the, the, the title wasn't so much of a clickbait of me going, shh, the secrets of becoming a good hacker, but it's just, I've been really thinking what made me become better as a hacker and how can I share that advice with you all throughout my videos? And I think I wanna make a part two to this video. I'm not sure, let me know in the comments, what do you think? Is this video kind of helpful to hear about what my mentality was and maybe include other hackers like Justin from earlier and have them also share their thoughts? Do you wanna hear more about these videos? Do you wanna see more videos like this? Drop me a comment, maybe just say part two and I'll see what I can do with it. All right, that's it. Do me a favor, if you haven't already, hit that bell notification and subscribe to the channel, become a Nahomi, and of course, do all the liking, subscribing and commenting and I will see you all next Monday in the next video. Peace.